Hey everybody, welcome to another On The Gold Boots On The Ground. This one is September, October of 2021. Now this is a big site and I gave you guys a whole lot of different clues. I had an A, B, C, D, E, F, and I think I even had a G, I don't remember. But this is September, October, 2021. And I will say most of my desert guys got this one really, really quick. But my water guys became a little bit more of a challenge. You guys that are used to having water at least 80, 90% of the time during the course of the year, well, I'll tell you, the first place you guys went to bed was to bedrock. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of people that walked right by where the gold was because they just had that bedrock mentality going on. And this one's completely different. So what I was talking about was the bedrock. I showed this hill coming down, this other little rivulet coming down, this flat area up here, whole lots of spots all through this area and asked you all to take a guess. So let's take a look at this area and let me share with you all of the things of what brought me to this site originally and where I ultimately found gold by just doing some prospecting and more importantly, looking at the ground and looking at all the things that the ground has to say. Now, I was out here yesterday because yesterday was Christmas and I came out here for my annual nugget hunt, my Christmas day nugget hunt, and I did pop out a nice little nugget. But I tell you what, the footage that I shot yesterday, a lot of it was just, yeah, I don't know if I had a disc failure, I don't know what it was, but so that's led me to the editing bay to try to turn lemons into lemonade. And quite frankly, with the way some of this footage is running, it feels more like turning taco sauce into butter. I was able to go through and save some of the footage, but more importantly, I was able to get a lot of screen grabs, lay them out on the timeline, and I'm just going to walk you through everything that I saw in the big picture to make it smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's exactly what I and so many of the others that got this Where's the Gold, how they figured it out. You know, if it wasn't for the fact that this is a two-buggy, six-hour trip on a good day, and my prospecting partner and the other buggy driver has gone off to Europe for a month on vacation, I might consider shooting this over again. But with the screen grabs that I've got and walking you through everything that I saw, again, to take a big picture and make it a small picture, I think it will be all that you need to understand how I got onto the gold on this location. Let's take a big picture and make it smaller and smaller and get on the gold. This is what I saw the first time I pulled onto the site, and this is the photo that I used for the Where's the Gold article in the GPA magazine. There were four things that I saw when I first pulled in that really got my attention. Let's break them down. The first spot, and the one that I was the least interested in, was the flow sand that I was parked on and I was standing on. On either side of the bedrock coming across the wash, it looked like it was completely devoid of any mineralization. Now, if you've ever been in the desert after a flash flood and the waters have receded, you'll see those runners of black across the top of the sand. That's black sand. That is a iron sands. This place had none of that. And those black sands are good indicators of a gold bearing area. But willing to give it a test, I grabbed my pick, dug down in five areas on one side, six areas on the other side. And each time I looked at my magnet, there was very little to no black sand. And being stubborn, I decided to go ahead and break out some of the bedrock and pan some of that material. Went back to the buggy, grabbed a couple of tools, broke open some bedrock, swept all that material in the gold pan, panned it, ran my magnet through it, and again, no gold and very little iron mineralization. The other three sites I wanted to look at were across the wash, and two of them were combined together. There was a debris line, and debris lines are created by high water events, flash floods, that bring all these organics and they get trapped in and around these bushes and rocks and trees, anything on the bank. Now, these are great indicators and they can be read almost like tree rings. If you look at a debris line and if you're looking at all this material packed up around a bush, you can see from the newest all the way back to the oldest and that gives you an exact measurement of how high that water had gotten during a flash flood. On the other side of the debris line was what I thought was a bench, and it was a bench. Now, I followed the debris line up about 200 feet, and at each spot where I stopped and I looked at the high water mark, the bench was still anywhere from 6 to 8 inches above the highest water line. This got me really excited because at least it gave me a place to go prospect. I started following the bench from upstream to downstream, 
and it was following the natural contour, but no matter what, it was still six to eight inches above the highest water level in the wash. Now, I was looking at everything. I was looking at the rock. I was looking at the organics. I could see where the material that had been washed down the hill from rains, how that was laying out, and I was looking at the rocks and how that was laying out, and I came across one spot where you could just see where all the water energy just quit. And this led me to the third spot that I really wanted to check out. And that was, I'm going to call it a, a bench dam or a bench levee. It started at the top of the hill and it came down and it was just a, it was like a levee and it came down almost to the water level and then it turned and went upstream. Now, with the slight slope of the hill to the west, a huge amount of this material was washed into that area, and that's what built up that levee, I would imagine. And all that material was being forced down, making that turn, and then heading uphill. And as it headed uphill, the water would lose its energy, and that would be where things would start to drop out. Now, there was this beautiful area where a lot of rock was laid out, and it was you could see it was just in a pattern of where the water had pushed it and then lost its energy. And behind that, there was a lot of organics and all of the organics facing the same direction. That's where I wanted to prospect. I wanted to take that area from where the water lost its energy to where it quit moving things and work backwards from there. And that's where I got in the first gold. Walking in that area just a little bit more, I came across the cactus that I showed in the picture, which was where I found the first gold. And I found that because of looking at the way the debris went on one side of the cactus and you could see a little bit of a bend and that bend, you could see where everything had dropped out. That was the beginning of where the water had lost its energy. I took some samples of the material, classified it down, took the bucket, went back to the buggy and panned that material. And I had not just specks in a pan. I had what I would consider workable gold. I'd already proved out that there was fine gold in that area. Now I wanted to see if there was something bigger. So I grabbed my detector, headed back over there, went right back to the area where I'd found the, the fine gold and started swinging my detector about 10 feet to either side of that cactus. I got four or five really fast, really good hits. And all of them were number seven, number nine buckshot. And it didn't bother me. I'm used to digging trash. Made a few more swings, got this nice, sweet little sound, and dug down and popped out my first nugget, which was four grains, so almost a third of a gram. Everything that I'd seen and the gold that I'd found helped me to decide to put this into the where's the gold because it's not simplified. There was nothing really simple about this because if you're a bedrock guy that you're always looking at that bedrock, you would have absolutely missed this site. Or else you'd looked at the flow sand, so there's nothing there. You'd crack some of the bedrock. You didn't see anything there and maybe walked up to wash a little bit further, but stayed looking for the bedrock. The gold in this area is not in the bedrock. That wash, as I started doing some more research, was never really known for carrying much gold. And there was actually some reports on that that I was able to find that they were finding gold in the side hills, but nothing in the wash exactly the way it was in this spot. And that spot was about a half a mile down. Well, it takes care of two things today. One is understanding a little bit more about the where's the gold boots on the ground on this particular site. And the other one is I found a gold nugget on Christmas Day. All right, gang, that's it. I hope this helped you understand the uh, where's the gold. Uh, really, the most important takeaway from this is if you're in a water area, where you're used to all the gold being stranded in the bedrock. I get it. But when you're in desert areas like this, where the only movement that we have is during flash floods, and when you start looking at some of these washes and you can see how high the wash has got, and then you see material, like all of that material that was going straight down into the wash, that was not affected by the high water. And then with that rock layer behind it, that's a spot that I'll always look at because that to me tells me that it slowed down enough to where it just stopped the rock. And anything that made it to that is going to get trapped in there. Take in everything you see. If you're used to working water, don't just depend on the bedrock. If you're not used to working in deserts, 
Think about where the water came through and where it went and where it stopped during those high water events. During the, You know, I don't think I could have said that any better myself. Remember, it's about taking a big picture and drilling it down and making it smaller and smaller to where you see those opportunities. Had I just looked at the flow sand and the testing that I did in the bedrock, I probably would have walked away from this area. But there were so many other things that were just screaming at me. Remember, it's all about the big picture. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment, shoot me an email. Until the next time, get out and go prospecting. Ah, there you are. Come on, get out of there. I'll take it. That's a nice little chunk. Ooh, it looks like I hit it with the pick. Yep, I did. Son of a gun. But there you go. Boy, I hit that with the pick pretty hard, too. We all know rules are meant to be broken. They came in and worked this area, cleared that area out, went on the other side, clearing an area out there on the bedrock as well. They said their indicator was that black sand. See that black sand up there? That was their indicator. So they followed that around and they both admitted to me that they got little to no gold.